I'm joined in the studio today by uh, Brendan Doris, and Brendan is the coordinator of a new political movement called the uh, the People's Convention. So, Brendan, welcome to uh, New Ninety FM. Thank you very much, Michael. Brendan, uh, we're getting to uh, what I would call into the uh, almost the business end towards uh, uh, for the election campaign. We're also starting to get newer groups coming. Uh, Coming to the fore, like yesterday, I had the uh, the United Left Alliance on. We'll have the uh, Direct Democracy. We've had FISNU on the People's Convention. Why do we need another one, or what's the thinking behind the People's Convention? Well, um, the fundamental idea is that uh, we have looked at all these other groups. I, I was involved in um, politics about thirty years ago, right, um, and then since then I pursued a career in architecture. But uh, all these other groups are proposing a political party which is not fundamentally different to those which we regard as squatting in Dáil Éireann, right? In other words, the parties in Dáil Éireann are parties of vested interest. And um, these parties, uh, if you like, are uh, self-selecting, looking after the interests of their backers and so on. They have nothing to do with the, the people of Ireland, who uh, vote for them. So we're, our idea is that rather than waiting for savers of any of the existing type or of any new type to come along and uh, pull the, the, the coals out of the fire, we think the people should empower themselves. Sure. But uh, I would ask you then, what do uh, you think that the people vote for? Because at least 70% of people in the forthcoming election will probably vote for Fine Gael, Labour and Fianna Fáil. I'd be very surprised if the numbers drop below 70%. So at least 70% of people think they know what they're voting for. Uh, why do you think that they're probably misled, then, uh, Brendan? Well, till now, what people have had is they basically haven't had um, a choice, right? And in my opinion, I'm nearly 60 years of age now, it will be this year, right? In my opinion, what people do in elections is they usually vote against what has been got, what has gone before to look for a change, looking for some relief, if you like, from uh, the burden that's been imposed upon them, uh, either economically or uh, socially or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. So ba- basically, uh, when you say p- people are voting for something, I don't think it's positive like that. I mean, mm-hmm. if the Labour Party presents you with uh, a 700 page policy document with for everything under the sun, right, and say vote for us and we'll deliver this, right? I don't think people uh, uh, understand that at all. So you're saying, uh, in essence, that people vote emotionally rather than what we would call rationally or logically? No, I think the Irish uh, electorate, the Irish people, are um, uh, very well informed. Uh, They're astute. They're probably one of the widest readers of newspapers in the world and so on. They're not fools. But uh, the thing is, if... um, uh, you're not actually offered uh, a, a concrete choice, right? Uh, ordinary people don't have the time to go around and organise, uh, if you like, something entirely new to sort out the problems of the country and of the system. So if you like, um, in, in this situation where election comes up, uh, they vote for the least worst rather than the best. That was the way I would put it, right? And, and uh, we want to change that. Our idea basically is that the people should themselves organise with the pre-selection uh, process, with the selection process uh, of candidates. In other words, they should find in their own constituency, in their own community, people that they respect as honest individuals who who will actually uh, undertake to consult them on all the matters being uh, discussed and legislated in the Dáil. Yeah. Can, I, Sorry. can I just interrupt you there, Brendan, and say... You, because you mentioned you're the same age as myself, okay. um, we used to have that debate in the late 60s, early 70s, uh, the difference between revolution and reform. Are you saying that the political parties that we have now would appear to be so far beyond reform that what we need is some radical, non-violent, revolutionary change? Um, uh, is that what the People's Convention is actually, uh, in essence, proposing, uh, uh, Brendan? And I don't mean that in any, uh, uh, as I say, negative way, but in, in, in the fact that you can't get your, the people that we're talking about to join parties and reform those parties themselves. Um, I don't think they're capable of reform because they're actually uh, based on, on, on principles which are fundamentally antagonistic to the interests of the ordinary people. Um, if you look at what happened in the economy 
uh, which has sort of more or less imploded and um, it's now been accompanied by a political crisis, right? You look at it, it's been the leadership of the banking world, not the staff of the banks, it's been the auction houses, it's been the auctioneers, it's been the media, it's been the, law, the legal and so on. It's the leadership and all this, right? Uh, which has actually brought the country to this situation, right? And this is what these political parties represent. They don't represent ordinary people and never have done. But they say that they will do this, that or the other for you, right? And we want to, to invert that and say, look, the doll was never supposed to be, uh, in terms of the Constitution, a... Um, um, a body which was actually made up of political parties it was supposed to be made up of people's representatives, right? Mm -hmm. And we want to bring that about. We want the people themselves to select representatives in their own constituency who will then receive a direct mandate, issue by issue, on the issues uh, being discussed and decided upon in Dáil Éireann. Yeah. Sorry, if I could put something to you, uh, Bernard, now, people are saying clearly we have... Uh, a banjaxed economy. There's no real argument about that in the sense of how bad, how deep, how entrenched uh, is open to debate. There's a significant... The way we've had politics in this country in the last 12 months where we essentially have had a government who haven't had a mandate for the policies that they've uh, been seeking to implement, it suggests that the, uh, the political system isn't much further behind the economy in terms of banjaxedness. I would put it to you, and I'd be very interested to hear your opinion on this, is that do we have a significant cultural deficit that has allowed both of these things to happen, combined with the uh, what we know, uh, the nasty things that happened in the church? In other words, that the institutions of state have actually started to let us down, and this, to me, can only have come about because, for some cultural reason, we haven't been either willing or able to address it over the last, essentially, 60 or 70 years. Okay, I mean, uh, the, the general um, direction of what you're saying, I, I actually agree with, right? Um, but uh, from my point of view, the, the base of the society is economic, right? If, okay. if, if, if that is sound, other things, uh, the, the issues in, in, in other aspects of life don't, reared our head in any sharp manner, right? Okay. So when the economy goes into crisis, right, the real nature of the unrepresentative, incompetent, corrupt, and so on, uh, political superstructure sure. has come to the fore. Yeah. So all, all that's actually happened is something that has always been there has actually um, become clearer, right? Mm -hmm. So what we're trying, what we're combating at the moment is there's lots of different groups uh, starting up, right? We're a new one, right? Of course, yes. But there's lots of different groups, lots of different organizations, new parties and proposals for um, discussion forum and citizens' uh, um, consultative conferences and constitutional, so on, so on. And we're saying, look, let's not uh, have more smoke and mirrors, right? Mm -hmm. Let's cut out. Uh, all this uh, confusion, confusing discussion about reform. There's only one issue. The issue is, do the people of this country decide what goes on in the state? And the answer is no. Okay. Can I, let's see where we start and where we don't start. I mean, do you still believe that the starting point should be the Constitution? Or is the Constitution an obstacle to what you're trying to achieve? In, in other words... Uh, the last, we have an opportunity in 2016 for what I'm calling the Second Republic. In other words, the, uh, all those noble ideas, let's take the good ones that came out in the first hundred years. And I'm not convinced the Constitution is a good one, but I'll leave that for uh, other people. Where would you start? Would you say, would we keep the Constitution and make that work as uh, the People's Convention are interpreting it? Or should we toss that out and really start with a, uh, a clean blackboard? Right. <laughs> What we're trying to do is we're trying to avoid um, diversionary discussion, right? And my view, this thing about the Constitution is one of them, right? The Constitution actually says the doll is something, right? It has never operated that way because it's been um, corrupted and, and subverted, right? Mm -hmm. So what we're saying is let us sort that out. Let the people select and elect representatives and mandate them on the issues, right? Okay. Now, when that takes place then, of course, the possibility of amendment or rewriting or anything of the Constitution can take place. But all these um, proposals, and there's lots of them, right, 
are actually quite a distraction, right? Because people, like ordinary voters, are going to say, well, if we have to stop to rewrite the Constitution, right, and we're in the middle of a, a, a hell of an economic crisis, and we're in the middle of sort of a, a political breakdown of the structures that we know uh, that have existed till now, right, mm-hmm. we're never going to get sorted. So they will feel under pressure, right, to retreat to the safest thing, which is to vote for an alternative to the existing government, right, mm-hmm. and, the, and the status quo parties, right? And we're saying, don't be taken in by that. Take a deep breath. Look at the fact that you can actually select candidates just as well as any political party can. You, the people of a constituency, can select candidates just the same way. Select them, get them elected, and mandate them as to what you want to do, right? And make sure they consult you on the issues. And also get them to sign a contract that they will uh, accept a vote of recall if they fail to live up to their uh, obligations and responsibilities as a people's representative. You've hit the nail on the head to a certain degree. You, are you saying that the economy is the fundamental issue at the, the end of the day? The economy is the fundamental thing. Okay. But the political system mm-hmm. uh, is actually uh, has allowed, if you like, um, the crisis to degenerate to the extent that it has, right? To the extent now that uh, we are actually facing um, like one or two generation mortgaging of the uh, of the wealth of this country uh, to pay out uh, foreign and and, and uh, native interests right vested interests so you you're right the, the economy is the basic thing right okay uh, this is where i get uh, probably a bit at odds with an awful lot of people here is that uh, i would rather be a prosperous dubliner than a poor irishman what do at the end of the day if is the nation worth preserving as we have envisaged it and that's really to me is a certain thing we, we one of the solutions we could look at is shall we say separation and uh, and i i'm not necessarily convinced uh, that our, the ireland of 1916 is worth preserving anymore we we've been uh, all we've been doing is led up the garden path by our own um perhaps we might have even been better staying with Empire. Oh. <laughs> uh, is that a bit radical then, uh, Brendan? No, I mean, it's something we could discuss yeah, uh, yeah. A, a, another time. My, in my view, right, uh, we are trying to make sure that we can avoid as much confusion and diversionary discussion as possible. Our academic discussion, right? Okay. And emotive discussion. The point is we have very stark reality, right? We have an economic collapse, we have a political system which doesn't serve any useful purpose as far as ordinary people are concerned, right? Sure. That's what we want to sort out and we want to stop pie-in-the-sky reform of constitutions, getting rid of Shannon's, 140 reforms that the Labour Party brought in or are proposing and so on. It's, It's all smoke and mirrors. None of it will make any difference. Uh, uh, That, I think, is really the crucial issue is, is that uh, at the end, it would be a very it, it would be a shame. Uh, and, and again, an analogy that I've been using is that uh, it wouldn't really matter what the color of the jockeys the jockeys' colors were if they're flogging a dead horse. Um, 